Just before we get into this run, I want to apologise for it being a day or so late. I'm having a couple of issues with a couple of conditions I suffer from, and it's making video production a little bit slower. So thank you so much for all of your patience. Please do bear with me, and I hope you enjoy the Victory Bell run. Victory Bell is at an inherent disadvantage in the Johto region. Coming up against Faulkner, Bugsy and Chuck in our first four gyms together will prove to be difficult. But don't write this one off straight away. Bellsprout learns some very good moves at very low levels. So, will our good learn set be enough to make Victory Bell our fastest grass-type Pokémon? We'll find out together. So this run's going to be quite a tricky one at the beginning, being a grass type. However, I'm going to try my very best to get Victory Bell a very good time. And just before we get into the run, I want to say thank you for the support you showed on the Smeagol video. It was an incredibly fun run to do, and if you've not seen it, I would highly recommend giving it a watch. And if you enjoyed the Smeagol run and you're not already subscribed, please do think about subscribing. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave it a like, and if you've got anything at all to say, please do leave it in the comments below. I read each and every one of your comments, and so many of them give me such a huge smile on my face. But now, let's take a little look at our bell sprouts and the base stats we're going to be working with at the very start of this run. As always, we're starting at level 5, and this time we have 21 HP. Our initial learn set is very limited, only having Vine Whip, but we are holding a berry, as all Gen 2 starters do. We have 14 attack, 9 defense, 13 special attack, 9 special defense, and 10 in speed. So that's the Pokémon we've got to work with, and let's now get the graphics up and get the run underway. As always, I will show you the very first encounter we get with a wild Pokémon, and in this instance it took a little while to get it. In the end we found a level 2 male Rattata, and it was two Vine Whips, we have incredibly good special attack. And now that the Rat is tangled up in all kinds of other business, we can carry on making our way towards Mr. Pokémon's house. On this route we take care of a lot of Poliwag. We learned growth at level 6, and then I got a little bit carried away. So much so that I found myself entering Mr. Pokemon's house at level 9, so we definitely did take out a lot of the wild Poliwag population there. And honestly, I don't even have a good reason for guessing this higher level, it was just very satisfying one-shotting Pokemon at such a low level. And it's at this point on the way back from Mr. Pokemon's house that the rival ambushes us, and I will tell you that I used the Universal Pokemon randomizer to replace Chikorita with Bellsprout. This was quite an obvious choice in this instance, because of course Bellsprout and Chikorita are both grass-type Pokemon. So now that we've taken care of the rival, we'll go back to Newbark Town, and we'll tell the police officer that the rival's name is Triple Question Mark. Professor Elm's aide will give us some balls, and with that, the challenge is well and truly underway. Our first destination is going to be Violet City, but first we definitely need to take on a lot more Pokémon. We get Sleep Powder at level 15, so we're going to grind all the way up to level 15, which will be a time-consuming process. However, it will benefit us in the long run. There is absolutely no way we're going to get through the first gym trainer in Faulkner's gym, let alone Faulkner himself, so our best option is to just grind. And inevitably, during this run, there's going to be a lot of sleep and a lot of growth strategies. We always have to play to our Pokémon's strengths, and in this instance it's incapacitating the opponent, increasing our special attack quite substantially, and then trying to one-shot or as close as we can. So we'll start that against the Pidgey here, we send it to sleep, and then we start to grow. Each growth will raise our special attack by one stage, and that means that after 6 growths, our in-battle special attack is a whopping 128. That's enough to easily one-shot the Pidgey, and it's also enough to one-shot the Pidgeotto. It might have been a little bit of overkill, but we got our first badge in a time of 12 minutes and 14 seconds. Our next destination is Azalea Town, but to get there we've got to go through Route 32, and of course we've got to go through Union Cave. So we'll pick up the Paralyzed Cureberry on Route 32, and then we'll take on some trainers in the cave. Being a grass type is actually a bit of an advantage in this cave because so many Pokemon are weak to grass. Against the Slowpoke we learn Stun Spore. I was umming and eyeing a little bit but I do think that learning Stun Spore over Wrap is the better choice at this point in the run. So we exit the cave at level 19, we make a quick jaunt through Azalea Town and we go straight into the Ilex Forest where our HM friends are waiting for us. And the first one to show up today is Paris. Paris is going to be helping us out with Cut, Dig and Flash, and if we need it later in the run, Paris will also learn Sweet Scent. And for once, being a grass type is very much an advantage here, because it means we can whittle away at Paris' HP, so we don't have to rely on pure luck alone for catching it. And just a few moments later, Psyduck shows his face. Psyduck's going to be helping us out with Surf, Strength, Waterfall and Whirlpool. And these two together are going to be doing the lion's share of the legwork in the overworld, so we are very grateful to have them by our side. 
And with our two HM friends safely tucked away in the bag, we have a little chat with Kurt and he tells us all about the shenanigans going on down in the Slowpoke well. These awful Team Rocket members are chopping off the tails of Slowpoke for people to eat. And that's just not on. Everyone knows that Slowking have the better tails to eat. But we've taken care of them once and for all in the Slowpoke well. Kurtz gives us a heal up and we can now get to grinding once more. There's absolutely no way we're going to be able to get through Bugsy with just Vine Whip. So we're going to have to grind all the way up to level 23 where we learn Acid. Acid isn't the greatest move in the world, however being Stab and Poison, it means at least Bugsy's Pokemon won't resist it quite as much. And at level 23 we also evolve into Weeping Bell. I decided to delay the evolution by just a couple of levels to make sure that we learn to Acid at the lowest possible opportunity. But with all that done and dusted we'll now go into the gym and we'll take on Bugsy. Bugsy is a Bug-type specialist, he's our second gym leader together and he leads with Metapod. We send the Metapod to sleep and then we start to grow. We send the Metapod to sleep and then we use growth just a couple of times. Metapod isn't particularly dangerous and I wanted a backup just in case Acid wasn't good enough against the Scyther. We send the Kakuna to sleep though and that goes down in two shots and here comes the Scyther. Fury Cutter doesn't do too much at all and we send it straight to sleep. The first Acid takes it into the yellow and the second Acid knocks it out and I really did not have to worry as much as I did about Bugsy's Gym. Time of 27 minutes and 42 seconds for the Hive Badge. But we can't be celebrating for too long because straight out of the gym we have our next rival battle. It is rival 2 and this time his starter will have evolved. He will lead with a Ghastly though and that is a big pain in the bum as it is. So we'll send it to sleep before he sends us to sleep. We'll use Acid against it and it's looking like it's going to be a 3 shot. The Ghastly wakes up but Lick doesn't paralyse us and we're on to the Quilava. Acid's a 2 shot against the Quilava and he doesn't burn us with Ember and we're on to the Zubat. Zubat can be incredibly annoying so we send it to sleep straight away and then we get to Aciding it. It's a 2 shot on the Zubat just like the Quilava and we're through the second rival battle without any resets whatsoever. I think this is one of the very few times we've been able to get through rival 2 as a Grass, Water or Fire type without taking a reset. So we'll now move through the Ilex Forest, picking up Cut en route, and out the other side of the Ilex Forest is Route 34, where Picnic Agena is waiting for us. She is an incredibly important trainer for us on this run because she will unlock the Leaf Stone. She is one of four trainers in the Johto region who will give you an evolutionary stone if you get their phone number. So you get the phone number, and I'll show you the mechanics a little bit later on onto how to get quick phone calls. But we'll carry on north into Goldenrod City, we'll pick up the bicycle to speed up our movement, and we'll go into the Underground. In the underground we'll grab the coin case so that we can buy Abra and we'll also get a haircut for our Weeping Bell. Out of the other end of the underground is the game corner. In the game corner we're going to spend 100 coins to buy Abra. Now Abra is a one trick pony here only learning teleport, however teleport is very very handy not only before we get fly but in later game he will save so much movement time as well. Talking of Fly, we'll pick up Kenya from the guard at the gate, we'll pick up the Quick Claw because our speed isn't that great, and then we'll pick up Dig from the National Park as well. Dig is going to be taught straight onto Paris, and I use Dig instead of Escape Ropes because it's far less menuing, and I find that Dig isn't useful in that many runs. But with all that out of the way, we can now take on Whitney, she is our third gym leader together. She's a normal type leader who leads with Clefairy. Clefairy doesn't screw us over for once with Metronome, and we're already onto the Miltank. Miltank says night night and goes to sleep, and we start to use Acid on it. Three Acids later, and we knock it out, and that was another gym battle, which was slow but very consistent. Time of 36 minutes and 33 seconds for Whitney's badge. So while we're not getting the best times in the world, we are very consistent. Slow and steady is very much winning the race here. And now that we have the plain badge, we'll have a little chat to the eavesdropping sisters in the flower shop. We'll get rid of the pseudo widow and we'll go straight into the Kimono Girls Dance Theatre. In here we have to take on all five of the evolutions and our reward is the Surf HM, so it's very much worth doing otherwise you'll get stuck here and you won't be able to progress much past Morty. So we'll grab Surf from the man staring at the Kimono Girls on the stage and we'll take a little trip east towards Mahogany Town. We're going to actually go through Mahogany Town and straight up to the Lake of Rage. Our main target here at the Lake of Rage is Hidden Power, but we'll also grab the Rare Candy to save some time later on as well. Our Hidden Power in this instance is Ice. Ice is one of the best Hidden Power types you can get, but I'm going to avoid using it for as long as possible. We'll teleport back to Ecrisic City, grab the Mince Berry from the Moomoo Farm just west of it, and now it's time for the third rival battle. 
He leads with Haunter this time as his Ghastly has evolved and we send it to sleep straight away. One of the big obstacles of this rifle battle is getting rid of this Haunter, because if you don't he will likely curse at you and that puts you on a very very tight timer for the rest of the battle, but we knock it out in a few shots and then we send the Quilava to sleep as well. Quilava's another dangerous Pokemon we've got to go up against so it's nice to get rid of that in two shots. Magnemite's a whole different story though because it doesn't get sent to sleep on the first two turns and of course it is immune to acid so we're going to have to use Vine Whip on it. I misclicked and used acid and then the Magnemite woke up on the very next turn so that could have been a little bit dangerous but it went straight back to sleep and then it's just a few Vine Whips to knock it out once and for all. His final Pokemon is Zubat and that is equally as annoying as all the others so we send that to sleep as well. As I said earlier in the run this is going to be a very sleep heavy run which might feel a little bit cheap but it really is Weeping Bell's biggest strength and after defeating the rival we'll fall through the hole, we'll release the beasts and it's time to take on Morty. Morty is a ghost and poison type trainer who will lead with Ghastly. Ghastly of course is pesky because as we see from the rival battle so many times it has curse. So we're going to send it to sleep and then we're going to grow. Growth really is going to be the strategy for a lot of the Pokemon that resist our grass type moves, especially those like Ghastly that resist the poison type as well. So we take it out in two shots and we're onto the Haunter. Vine Whip is powerful enough at this point to take that out in one shot. Vine Whip doesn't one shot the Gengar and we get sent to sleep, but we were holding the Mint Berry so we wake up straight away and his final Pokemon is Haunter. Haunter goes down in one shot and with that we have defeated Morty in a time of 48 minutes and 26 seconds. Let's now head west towards Olivine City, and while we're making our way there, I've got a question for you lovely people. Would anyone be interested in me making a longer form video, taking you through the basics of how to get started challenge running Crystal? I've had a lot of comments asking me how I got into it and how difficult it was, so I wondered, would a tutorial-like video be something all of you would want? Because if it is, I would happily make it. I really do think that Pokemon Crystal is the best game to challenge run because you have 16 of the 17 types available as type specialists so you really do have to work hard in a lot of different places. But do let me know and in the meantime we'll beat up Chuck. Chuck is a fighting type specialist who will lead with Primate. Primeape is going to be no issue for us whatsoever, it falls asleep in a couple of turns and not a single one of its moves really can hurt us that badly at all. So we're definitely going to be using the Primeape as our Pokemon to set up on. Even though we will resist all of Poliwrath's moves it can still confuse us with Dynamic Punch and I really don't want to take that risk. So we'll take out the Primeape in a couple of acids and then with our whopping 360 special attack we just yeet the Poliwrath into next week. We get Chuck's badge in a time of 53 minutes and 1 second. We'll exit the gym and grab flying from Chuck's wife and that will enable us to fast travel all the way back to the Lake of Rage where an angry red Gyarados is awaiting us. And for safety reasons this is another battle where we're going to send it to sleep immediately. Gyarados has Dragon Rage on its learn set and that is a fixed 40 HP damage move so that would be just 3 shots to knock us out so we're not taking any chances whatsoever. So we'll knock it out before it gets a chance to wake up and we'll have a little chat with Lance the Liar with the Flyers. He'll take us through the Mahogany Underground section murdering a Rocket Grunt en route but with nothing else of great significance happening in the underground we'll skip through the rest of it and we'll go straight into Price's gym. Price is an ice type specialist who will lead with a seal. Now this is a really interesting type matchup because we are weak to all of his ice type moves but he is weak to all of our grass type moves so it really is a battle of the super effective versus the super effective. However I can send his Pokemon to sleep so I think I'm at a little bit of an advantage here. In fact so much so that we one shot his Dugong and then we one shot his Piloswine as well and at the end of this battle we grow to level 42 and we learn Razor Leaf. Razor Leaf's going to be replacing Vine Whip as it's an all round better move and we get Price's badge in a time of 1 hour and 8 seconds. It's at this point we'd normally take on Jasmine, however we're going to be doing a little bit of detouring first. The first thing we're going to obtain is Sludge Bomb. This TM is available from the guard at the gates just north of Mahogany Town but you have to have defeated the Mahogany Town Rocket section in order to obtain it which is why we got it now. We'll then make a trip over to Violet City and pick up the rare candy just south of the Sprout Tower and while we're here in Violet City we'll make the climb up to the tippy top of the tower and get ourselves a lovely Flash HM. Our next destination is Goldenrod City where we're going to decline a trade for an Abra for a Machop but we will say yes to getting the return TM. Up next is a brief surf south near the daycare to grab our next rare candy and then we're flying home. And the reason we're flying home is so that we can adjust the clock. 
Once an hour you get a phone call in Pokemon Crystal, but if you change the clock between DST and normal time, then you can force that phone call. And Gina being the only number in our phone book means that we can instantly get our Leaf Stone. So we'll go back to Route 34 and pick up the Leaf Stone off her, and then we'll hide in the daycare to delete her number because we don't have any use for her anymore. And I can't think of any nicer place than to use the Leaf Stone here in the daycare center in order to evolve our Weeping Bell into a Victory Bell. So now that we have Victory Bell, we can finally get on with taking on more of these gym leaders. We'll ascend the top of the lighthouse once more, and here we'll give Jasmine the secret potion. She claims that secret potion is for Amphi, but we've got to keep a close eye on that Steelix. But I mustn't get bitter before the battle's even started. She sends out a pair of Magnemite before we even think about the Steelix. We send the first Magnemite to sleep, and then we start to grow. I decide to grow just three stages this time, because Steelix is actually neutral to Grass-type moves, so it should go down very easily, and in fact it was a one-shot without a critical hit. She sends out her second Magnemite, that's also a one-shot, and we have defeated Jasmine on our very first try. And you had better believe I was very ecstatic at that. Jasmine very much is my bogey trainer in Pokemon Crystal. So to take her out in just three one-shots felt amazing and reinvigorated me for the rest of this run. And talking of the rest of this run, the next trainer we're taking on is the rival again. He leads with Golbat this time and of course we send it straight to sleep. It's the nature of the beast for grass-type Pokemon in Johto runs. An awful lot of Pokemon either singly or doubly resist grass-type moves, and a lot of them that do also resist poison-type moves. So sleep really is our best friend. I decide not to sleep against the Quilava though when we get a flame wheel to the face. The Sludge Bomb knocks it out in two shots though, and we're on to the Magnemite. Razor Leaf is a one shot against the Magnemite, even though it's not very effective, and then we switch to Sludge Bomb for the Haunter. It retaliates with a Shadow Ball for minimal damage, but two shots later and it goes down. The final Pokemon of Sneasel, that is very frail, and it gets knocked out with a single Sludge Bomb, and we have defeated the rival for the fourth and penultimate time. Nothing of great importance happened climbing the Radio Tower, so we'll grab our rewards. We'll get the Pink Bow off Mary, and we will also get the Radio Card, and with that we can get through Kanto a little bit later on. We'll now take a trip east through the Ice Path, we'll pick up the Waterfall HM, we'll also pick up the Nevermelt Ice because we do have Hidden Power Ice, and we find ourselves in Blackthorn City. And we have just one thing to do here in Blackthorn City, and that is take out Claire. Claire is the actual Dragon-type specialist of this run, and she leads with Dragonair. We one-shot the Dragonair with Sludge Bomb, and we do exactly the same against the second Dragonair. It's looking like we won't need Hidden Power Ice for this battle, as all three Dragonair go down in one. And her final Pokémon is Kingdra. We send that to sleep straight away, and then we get to Razor Leafing it. We get a critical hit on the first turn, and that takes it into a healing loop. We hit again on our second turn, she uses a full heal, and we knock it out in just three shots. And after a brief detour into the Dragon's Den, we get Claire's badge in a time of 1 hour and 58 seconds. And that's it, we've got all eight Jotonian Gym Badges. So we'll now take a trip east from Newbark Town onto the Victory Road analogue, we'll pick up the Rare Candy on route and we'll make our way through Victory Road. Here is where we get ambushed for the very last time by our rival. Mr Punctuation himself will lead with a Sneasel and will take this opportunity to get set up for the rest of the battle. So we'll send it to sleep, and this time I'm not taking any chances whatsoever. We're going to set up all six growths, and look at how ridiculously high our special attack gets after six growths. We're at a whopping 648 in special attack, but even that is not enough to take out the Golbat in one shot, and we end up being confused. We hit through the confusion though and knock it out on our very next turn. We hurt ourselves in confusion against the Kadabra though, and it uses Future Sight. We don't need to worry about that too much though, because Future Sight deals typeless damage here in Generation 2. What we do need to worry about is this Typhlosion though. We have a nightmare battle against it and hit ourselves a couple of times in confusion, but we eventually knock it out and we one-shot the Magneton. That just leaves Haunter. We use Razor Leaf against the Haunter, we knock it out with a critical hit, and we have defeated the rival for the very final time. And just before we enter the league, we're going to pick up a couple of items that we missed en route. We're going to get the Miracle Seed from just south of Violet City, and on the very same route we'll also get the Poison Barb of Frida of Friday. And with those two items ready to give our Poison and Grass-type moves a little bit of a boost, we can heal up in the Pokemon League and say thank you to our HM friends. It's a very big thank you to Kenya, to Abra, to Psyduck, and to Paris. I hope you all have a lovely rest in the Costa del PC box while we buy our four full restores for the League, and we'll take a little look at the stats of our Victory Bell, 
before we enter and take on Will. We are level 54 with 184 HP. Our moves are Sludge Bomb, Growth, Razor Leaf and Sleep Powder. 155 in attack, 109 in defense, 148 in special attack, 104 in special defense and 116 in speed. And our first league member is going to be Mr. St. Germain, one of our HM friends. It's Will, he is a psychic type trainer and he will lead with Azatu. We'll start with a Sludge Bomb against the Zatu, and that will take it out in just one shot. And next he sends out Jinx. It's another one shot against Jinx with Sludge Bomb, so we're not going to get hit by any Ice type moves. And he sends out his second Zatu. We use Sludge Bomb against that Zatu, and it's a one shot as well, because that is how powerful Sludge Bomb is. It's one shot against the Executor, and his final Pokemon is Slowbro. We switch to Razor Leaf for the Slowbro, we get a critical hit, and that was five easy one shots for our first League member. Up next is Koga. Koga is a poison type specialist with some very pesky Pokemon indeed. We sludge bomb the Ariados and it's not a one shot and he uses double team. We hit through the Evasion Increase though and we're on to the Venomoth. We send the Venomoth to sleep and then we start to grow. I decided to grow against the Venomoth after seeing that Sludge Bomb was a two shot against the Ariados, but he wakes up, he confuses us, we hurt ourselves in confusion, and then he hits us with Psychic. This battle really did fall out of our hands very, very quickly. I completely forgot that Venomoth had Psychic on its learn set, and while we do eventually take it out, the Crobat has a priority move with Quick Attack and just knocks us out in one shot. Let's try again with a different strategy and hope for the best. We start off the same against the Ariados, knocking out in two Sludge Bombs, and then we're onto the Venomoth. Instead of growing, we're just going to try and take it out as quickly as possible, but once again we get confused. It's a very short confusion and we knock it out in two shots, and then we send the Crobat to sleep. I think that's going to be the best way to make sure it's not as dangerous as possible, and Sludge Bomb is looking like a three shot. We get very lucky and hit Sleep Powder twice through Double Team there. And after a bit of a war of attrition and losing an awful lot of HP, we do eventually knock out the Crobat. We're onto his Fortress next and we don't really have anything too great against the Fortress, so this is where we're going to have to set up. That Fortress can go boom, but it doesn't have any Bug or Steel type moves, so the best thing to do is just keep it asleep as long as possible. Spikes is meaningless for us because of course we only have the one Pokemon in our party, and then a big boost to Razor Leaf with our growth means it's a one shot. Razor Leaf knocks the muck down very low, but we miss our second Razor Leaf. But we hit on our third turn, and we've knocked out the muck, and we've defeated Koga in a time of 1 hour and 31 minutes. Up next is Bruno. Now, Bruno can be quite difficult for a lot of our challenge runs, however, in this instance, he should be very, very easy. We resist his fighting type moves, and his Onyx is going to be four times weak to Razor Leaf, so our plan is to just set up as long as possible, take a little hit from Dig, and then chew through every single one of his Pokémon. We start off with a one shot on the Hitmon top, and it goes down straight away. It's a one shot on the Hitmon Chan, and that gets a critical hit to make sure it's extra fainted. We do exactly the same against the Hitmon lead with a one shot. Machamp puts up zero resistance and gets knocked out with a critical hit. And the final Onyx is on screen for just a matter of seconds. Five one shots against Bruno in a time of one hour, 32 minutes exactly. Let's now move on to Karen. Karen's usually the one stasis conditioning us, but we are going to Uno reverse her this time. We send her Umbreon to sleep and we use Sludge Bomb to take it deep into the red. It stays asleep so there's no sand attack for us this time. She sends out Houndoom next and I got a little bit cocky and tried to just set up without sending it to sleep. We got over half damage dealt to us though, so we're going to have to send it to sleep and sludge bomb it away in one shot. And here comes the Vile Plume. Vile Plume can stun Spora, so the best thing to do is make it go 9-0 like all the other Pokemon in this run. And then a single sludge bomb knocks it out. That brings us on to the Gengar. We use Razor Leaf against the Gengar with our 351 special attack, and that is a one shot. And with that, we get a zero reset Karen in a time of 1 hour, 32 minutes and 57 seconds. And now our only obstacle between us and the Hall of Fame is Lance the Liar with the Flyers. This on paper should be a very difficult battle for Victory Bell. All six of his Pokemon have the flying type, so we do have Hidden Power Ice in our bag just in case it goes wrong, but I am going to place faith in our tried and tested sleep and setup strategy. It has worked so far for us with only one reset, and I see no reason for it not to work here as well. So we set up all six growths and we raise a leaf against the Gyarados to knock it out in one shot. We miss a Sleep Powder against the first Dragonite and we get hit by a very strong Blizzard. That takes us into the red, but fortunately we send it to sleep on the next turn. And Sludge Bomb is a two-shot while it's just having a nap. 
Sleep Powder hits on his Aerodactyl next, and instead of using Razor Leaf, I decide to use Sludge Bomb, because I want to make sure that we actually hit the Aerodactyl. It's got a very high chance of staying asleep for two turns, and while Sludge Bomb is resisted, it's 100% accurate. We manage to one-shot the Charizard with Sludge Bomb, and we're onto his level 50 Dragonite. We send it to sleep and get to Sludge Bombing it as he uses a full Restore. We're gonna outspeed, so it's just two Sludge Bombs to knock it out, and his final Pokemon is his second Thunder Waving Dragonite. We send it to sleep, Sludge Bomb takes it into the red, it stays asleep and we knock it out and we've defeated Lance without Hidden Power Ice on our very first attempt. Time of 1 hour 34 minutes and 29 seconds and a league time of 134.45. Now don't you dare go anywhere because Kanto is next. And we're back where it all began, outside our house in Newbark Town, where Professor Elm gives us a phone call. He's got an SS ticket for us, and that will let us get to the main meat of the Kanto region. But before we get there, we've got to retrieve our HM friends. So it's a very warm welcome back to Kenya, to Abra, to Psyduck, and to Paris. They've all had a lovely little rest while we were taking on the league, and they are incredibly proud of Victory Bell. We'll then make our way through Ecratique City and into Mount Malta, where we've got a rare candy to pick up and then we'll fly to Olivine City. In Olivine City, we're going to take a detour into the Whirl Islands, where our final rare candy in the Johto region is residing. And once we've acquired that, it's a very quick spin, and we find ourselves in Vermilion City in Kanto. And the first thing we do in Kanto is the last thing we do in Johto. We're going to get another rare candy, this time from the chairman of the Pokemon fan club. And with that rare candy safely tucked away in our bag, we can take a quick cycle up through Route 5, through Saffron City for a quick jaunt, onto Route 7 and into Celadon City. We've got a couple of bits to pick up here in Celadon City. We're going to get the leftovers from the bin in the cafe. We'll get a pee, pee up from a bush and then we'll make our way into the gym where Erica is waiting for us. She is our first Cantonian gym leader and our ninth gym leader together. She's a grass type specialist who leads with Tangela. And with her being a grass type specialist, we have the type advantage. We sludge bomb the Tangela, her victory bell and her Belossum. Take them all down in one shot and that just leaves Jumpluff. Jumpluff's also weak to sludge bomb so it's another one shot and we get a very easy battle with Erica in a time of 1 hour 39 minutes and 39 seconds. Let's now move on to Misty. Misty is a water type specialist so once again we have the type advantage. We use Razor Leaf against the Golduck to one-shot it with a critical hit. She sends out Quagsire, and poor Quagsire is four times weak to grass. So it goes down in one hit, as does her Lapras, and that just leaves Starmie. Starmie's a Psychic type, so it could have had a type advantage over us, but we outsped and we knock it out, and we get the Cascade Badge in a time of 1 hour, 44 minutes, and 5 seconds. Let's now move on to Sabrina. Sabrina has the type advantage over us, being a Psychic type trainer, but she doesn't resist Sludge Bomb, so we say goodbye to Espeon straight away. Mr. Mime doesn't survive a hit either, and neither does Alakazam. Three one-shots against one of the hardest gyms for us being a poison type, and we get the Marsh Badge in a time of 1 hour, 44 minutes, and 42 seconds. Now, Lieutenant Surge is an interesting one, because we resist electric type moves, but he does have that pesky Magneton. Before we even think about that Magneton though, we've got to knock out an Electabuzz, a Raichu, and an Electrode, and then he sends it out as his fourth. Of course, we have nothing really great against Magneton, so we send it to sleep. Razor Leaf does over half damage on the first turn, so it's a two shot, and then it's back to Sludge Bomb for the Electrode. That was an incredibly easy surge battle in a time of 1 hour, 46 minutes, and 2 seconds. And the final gym leader on the chopping block of our rapid run of gyms is Brock. And really, is there anything I can say here that would be surprising? All of Brock's Pokemon are four times weak to grass type moves, so it's as simple as just pressing Razor Leaf on every single one of them. This is a real issue for Brock. If you have a grass type move, it is guaranteed one shot city. We knock all of his Pokemon out in one hit, and we get the badge in a time of 1 hour 47 minutes and 28 seconds. We'll now take a trip south down past the Viridian Hedge Maze, saying hello to 3Drill en route. We'll go into Pallet Town and surf south even more and find ourselves on Cinnabar Island. Here is where the new gym leader Blue is waiting for us. He's in mourning over the loss of the greatest place in all of Kanto, but he does eventually say he'll go back to his gym and battle us a little bit later on. But first we've got to take on Blaine. On paper, Blaine should be a very difficult leader, however we have something to hit all of his Pokemon neutrally. We get a lucky critical hit against his Magcargo, and then we swap to Sludge Bomb for the Magmar that goes down in one shot, and the Rapidash doesn't outspeed us, so we one shot it with Sludge Bomb, and that means we've defeated him in a very quick time and gets his badge in a time of 1 hour 48 minutes and 52 seconds. 
Janine is next, and Janine is our favourite pushover. Even though she resists our moves, we have no issue against her whatsoever, because all of her Pokémon are so underleveled. Purely from a gameplay point of view, having her Pokémon at such low levels made no sense to me, because Fuchsia City is very far out of the way, and you have to make a big detour to get there without waking up the Snorlax. So if her Pokémon were in the high 40s, early 50s, it would make a lot more sense. But we defeat her in a total of 44 seconds, and we're on to our final gym leader, it's Blue Time. Blue is actually a very big challenge in a lot of runs, and as you can see here, we don't send the Pidgeot to sleep straight away, so we take a little bit of damage. We then set up a couple of growths, but at the worst possible moment Pidgeot wakes up and deals a lot of damage again with Wing Attack. We sludge bomb the Alakazam and that goes down in one shot, and he's on to the Arcanine. We miss our Sleep Powder against the Arcanine and it's a one shot on us with Flamethrower. So we're back to square one and we send the Pidgeot to sleep straight away this time. Sludge Bomb gets a better damage roll and we knock it out in a single hit. We know that Sludge Bomb's a one shot on the Alakazam so we don't need to worry there, and we're at full health for the Arcanine. Arcanine decides to take a nap this time, and Sludge Bomb deals a lot of damage. He gets poisoned in the process, and the poison knocks him out before he gets a chance to fill the restore, and we're on to the Gyarados. It's a two shots with Sludge Bomb on the Gyarados, but he sets up Rain Dance and gets in a healing loop, so he doesn't even get a chance to properly attack. Out comes Executor, and even though it's a Psychic type, it's very weak to a Poison type move, so we knock it out in one Sludge Bomb, and his final Pokémon is Rhydon. Rhydon is four times weak to Grass, so it's a single Razor Leaf, and we defeat Blue on our second attempt. Time of 1 hour, 51 minutes, and 17 seconds. And that's it. We've got all of our Gym Badges. There's only one more challenge awaiting us. It is Red Time. We are just shy of the two hour mark right now, so it's going to be tight, but do you think we're going to be able to defeat Red in under two hours? If you're watching the premiere, let me know in the chat. And if you're watching after the premiere, please do let me know in the comments. But for now, we'll pick up our final rare candy. We'll go into Mount Silver and we'll take on Red, the final challenge of the run. He leads with Pikachu and Pikachu outspeeds us, hits us with charm. And that means Sludge Bomb is not a one shot. As always, on our first attempt, we try at our current level with our current learn set and we'll chop and change things from there, and we eventually get past the Pikachu. We don't outspeed the Espeon, Espeon Psychic critical hits, and we do get knocked out, so it's rare candy time. Being outsped by both the Espeon and the Pikachu means we have no real chance at level 66. So we're going to try at level 69, and I always use my rare candies in the same pattern. I use three rare candies, three further rare candies, and then four more rare candies. In this instance, we do eventually send the Espeon to sleep, but survive on only 7 HP, and it's not a one-shot with Sludge Bomb. And that means that even with sending Snorlax to sleep, it will knock us out straight away, because it knows Snore. Let's not beat around the bush, I want to try and get the quickest time possible, so we're going to use three further rare candies. We're now at level 72, and while we're in the menu, we're also going to replace Razor Leaf with Giga Drain. Giga Drain only has 5 PP, but it is a draining move, and it's 5 base power stronger than Razor Leaf, so it could help us out in a pinch. We send the Pikachu to sleep, and then we set up a growth. We send it to sleep once more, and then we start using Giga Drain on it. Giga Drain's a one-shot on the Pikachu, and we're on to the Espeon. We still don't outspeed the Espeon, so we take a lot of damage from Psychic, taking us down to 45 HP. I take a risk and use Growth, though, a couple of times, and we get our special attack up to a whopping 675. Giga Drain drinks through the Espeon to regain an awful lot of HP, and we're back in the green for the Snorlax. We send the Snorlax to sleep straight away, that means it doesn't have a chance to use Amnesia, and we start Giga Draining it. We get it deep into the yellow with our first turn, and it's just two shots with Sludge Bomb to knock it out once and for all. Here comes Venusaur. We send the Venusaur to sleep straight away and get to Sludge Bombing it, because Sludge Bomb is neutral, but it wakes up on the first turn, however it doesn't have a chance to hit us, and we're on to the Charizard. Charizard outspeeds us and knocks us out with a Flamethrower, so we're going to have to hope that we outspeed the Charizard at level 76. We've used up all of our rare candies at this point, we are not going to make it under two hours, but it is going to be incredibly close. We outspeed and one-shot the Pikachu, and then Espeon uses Reflect instead of Psychic. That gives us an extra turn to knock it to sleep, and it's just two Sludge Bombs to knock it out. Here comes the Snorlax. We set up a growth as Snorlax uses Amnesia, and then we send it to sleep. My plan against the Snorlax is to just set up. We're going to be taking some damage from Snore, however Giga Drain should be able to drink that back up on his subsequent Pokémon. 
However, with Snorlax using Amnesia, Giga Drain isn't dealing much damage at all. We do manage to get it into the yellow and survive on 235 HP. It wakes up and that is my cue to just Sludge Bomb it out of there. Here comes the Venusaur and we use Sludge Bomb on the first turn. We take it deep into the yellow and then Sludge Bomb knocks it out on the second turn. Charizard's Awake and Sunny Day is active, so we're going to have to do everything we can to make sure it does not hit us at all. We outspeed and it goes to sleep. Sludge Bomb takes it into the yellow and another one knocks it out and now we just have Blastoise left. We are set up, Giga Drain is a one shot and we have defeated Red in a time of 2 hours and 59 seconds. I am so so proud of Victory Bell. After an incredibly difficult start as a grass type, we made it through in a very very quick time. We are just 8 seconds slower than Meganium. 25th place on the leaderboard but with a very respectable number of resets. Macargo is still down in bottom place on the leaderboard in 36th now, and of course there is no change at the top of the leaderboard. Kangaskhan is still top of the tree in first place, and Jinx is in 10th place and the next in the drop zone. But with that, we are done. So I'm going to say thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do think about leaving a like. If you want to see more challenge runs just like this, please do think about subscribing. I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash trainersquidgy. And if you've got anything at all to say about this run, please do leave it in the comments below. But until next time, I'll say thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all very, very soon.